and welcome to vlog 119. I am the audiophile barista and in these vlogs I talk about audio, coffee and other things that keep me busy. So let's get into it. Today's problem is power strips and ground loops. I have more pieces of equipment that require power than I have good power inlets. As you can see here, I have this PS Audio Regenerator, one of the better solutions for powering your equipment if you ask me. But the power plant can only accommodate 5 pieces of gear. Now in order to have more equipment benefit from the power regenerator, I connected two extension strips to the power plant. So I have 3 pieces of equipment that I can connect directly and the rest of the equipment is plugged into one of these extension strips. Not the most elegant solution and it means that only 3 pieces are actually directly connected to the regenerator which are the preamp, the dock and the CD transport. One extension strip has all kind of low power equipment connected like the Ethernet hub and the HDMI extender. The other strip was used for the RHEL subwoofer. And this strip also functions as an easy to reach power strip for any visiting equipment. Power amps were never connected to the regenerator. And even though this situation was not ideal, this setup did work pretty well. A setup like this could potentially introduce all kind of noise into your system, but the amount of noise was kept pretty well within limits. However, when I first installed my new preamp, I immediately noticed a pretty loud hum through the loudspeakers. So I started evaluating my power setup and I decided that I would start by reducing the amount of equipment connected to the PS Audio power plant. The first step was to see if all connected equipment was actually still necessary and it occurred to me that the HP Chromebox was not used very often anymore and lately it would not even function as well as it used to. It is pretty old and as it is software driven this was bound to happen. So the first thing to free from the system was this Chromebox. Then I started looking at the extension strip for the subwoofer. The subwoofer is on the other side of the room, so I had a 20 feet extension cord going from the regenerator to the power strip and then a very short power cord to the subwoofer. Now there is a power socket right next to the subwoofer, but that is on another power line. As you may know, I have a dedicated power line for just my audio equipment. It connects to a Furotech box with two power outlets. One for the power amps and one for all the rest of the equipment. So one socket is filtered through the regenerator and the other outlet is unfiltered. Most of the time unfiltered is preferred for power amps. But as an experiment I thought why not use the outlet next to the subwoofer and connect it to my PS Audio Quintet filtered power strip. This is not a regenerator of course and it would open the problem of a ground loop but it is free to try. Fortunately this worked just fine. No hum. So that was another socket on the regenerator freed up. So now I had a filtered power strip that was now occupied with only one piece of gear. So I started thinking if I could transfer more equipment to that power strip. And it occurred to me that there were two potential contenders that I could try out. Now the biggest concern was to prevent any ground loops of course. And this can happen when ground has multiple pads it can choose from. And as I was working from two different power lines this was a very well a possibility. So what if I could replace those pieces of equipment that will not create a ground loop. For example I have my music server that is only connected to my main system with an ethernet cable. Would that work? Or how about my CD transport? It is connected via optical Toslink. Toslink does not carry crown, so that might work. Let's try. Okay, so I hope you like that little montage. And this is where we are at the moment. An empty spot over there. An empty spot over there. A new position over there. And a new position over there. So the CD transport has been replaced from there to over here. And this meant I had to change two cables. One is the power cable. So that is the black one going over here to the power strip. And the other one is the optical digital cable going from the transport to the DA converter over there. And this was all fine without introducing any noise or any extra hum. So that is one thing. The other one is the music server. You only see the white ethernet cable now because up there is the ethernet hub. This is a very long cable, but this is temporary. 
and it is now connected to the server. As you can see, the white cable, and then there is, of course, power, which now runs up here to the power strip from PS Audio. Oh, and previously it was this power strip that I used for the subwoofer. So the next thing that I have to do is to find out if or where I want to place the CD transport and where I want to place the music server. Now I was thinking maybe I could place the CD transport up here, making it very convenient to reach it, but also maybe it can go back there and have a long power cord running all the way to the power strip over there. So up until now this experiment has been very successful. I don't know if the transport is going to stay over there and I don't know if the music server is going to stay over there but this is an experiment cabling is much too long now so whenever I'm sure that this is what I want that this is what works I will tidy up all the cabling and stuff like that but there's still of course the uncertainty of what kind of power amp that I'm going to get so it's a bit of a waiting game but my aim to try and reduce the amount of equipment connected to the PS Audio has been a success. And one more thing I want to tell you about this preamplifier because a few days after I got it, it started making noises. I was afraid I was getting back to the problems I had with the Itos, but it was obviously the sounds that a tube that is at the end of its life um, is making ear itself say after five or six years to change the tubes and this one hasn't been changed in 10 years so i picked up a few tubes one phillips and the other in a neutral box but that was a siemens and i put it in and now this thing sounds brand new again so that is the other side of having to deal with tubes that are broken the happiness of when you replace it just like a light bulb it is back to new again so that's also what happened and the server now has a spot over here i'm not sure if this is going to be the final spot and i was thinking well there maybe is no reason to have it even upstairs here in the system because it plays over ethernet so i did a little experiment and i placed it in the office downstairs and then it had a long ethernet cable to the router and from the router to the hub and from the hub to the streamer and it was a short-lived experiment because the sound got robbed of well a lot of the the magic a lot of the musicality Things like, you know, a singer like Johnny Cash, when you hear him singing, you hear this deep voice in, in his chest. And that feeling, that growl, I, I'm looking for better words, but that growl that you hear in his voice, it, it was gone. It was become very flat. So when I put it back up here in the system, it was back again. So definitely... I don't know, maybe because of the router sitting in the way, because this streamer also sounded way, sounds way better than the NAS that I used before, which was also connected through the uh, streamer, of course. And the biggest difference is when you have a digital, sometimes you have this nervousness that comes into the sound. I don't know how to describe it any better. And I had it a little bit with the NAS and... I don't have it at all with this streamer um, sitting here. So that's something to consider. If you have a streamer, look up. Is it connected in a way that it goes through your router or not? I don't, I'm not sure if it is that, but if you can try it, if that is how you have it set up now and you can try it in another way, give it a go. It might be that and this streamer definitely sounds a lot better than the NAS that I had before. Okay, so the end of vlog 119. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Today is a Friday. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice weekend.